Hi friends. So today I want to talk about a very difficult subject. It's a subject that some people still consider taboo. You don't say it, you don't talk about it, you don't say the word. Uh, and uh, I think the theme this year is that the narrative is going to change. And that theme has to do with suicide. And I'm going to be really careful with the words I use because um, as I'm learning as I do videos that YouTube demonetizes, not that I'm ever going to get to that, but uh, they uh, flag videos that have certain words that they don't consider appropriate. Um, and so I'm just going to be really careful using that word, but that's the topic of this video. Suicide is something that has been in the news and is talked about a lot in the month of September because it is considered uh, Suicide Awareness Month. Uh, it is a topic where more education is getting pushed out and uh, more research is, is being done and some of the research is coming out as new things that we can try to do to help people who feel that way. As of the year 2023, approximately 720,000 people died from this around the world. It continues to go up. It continues to go up in children. But what I want to talk about today, um, I, I'm not I'm not a therapist. I'm not a licensed mental health provider. I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist. I'm a nurse. I'm I'm somebody who's had people close to me in their life. And I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about what ways that we can help. And what seemed to work for some might not work for others, but I just wanted to give my perspective on it. 988, dial, text, call 988 to get somebody 24 seven on the other end. It's a suicide crisis hotline. I encourage anybody to call that. It's okay to call that. It's not, it should not be, do not feel that it means anybody is weak. If you have a loved one, you're with somebody, it's really a tricky situation. And I'm not necessarily going to talk about suicidal ideation or thoughts of over, you know, I have some good months and then I'm down and I'm thinking about it. And then I have some good months, weeks, years, then it, I'm thinking about it. And it's always kind of there. Um, that thought process pops up when at one point with that thought process then go into action and what is that action it can just it can just occur during one of those cycles or it can occur not in one of those cycles and for some people you know you don't even have to have a critical life event for those feelings to occur um, these are feelings perhaps for most of feeling trapped feeling hopeless feeling that I can't take it anymore. This pain is intractable. It is not, nothing seems to help, but I don't believe anything will help. It's never going to get any better. Um, intractable physical pain, intractable emotional pain. I just want it all to stop. This is the only way I can think of. And I'd be better off because I won't be causing problems. Perhaps somebody's thinking like that. And those thoughts, those ruminating negative cycle of thoughts are not true. The, you wouldn't be better without, nobody would be better without you. There's a purpose for you. Being alive is a purpose. Getting the appropriate help to break the cycle or to stop this particular crisis from happening and getting out of it, there's help available. So instead of talking about the ideation, I wanted to kind of focus on uh, the research that's out about what's called suicidal crisis syndrome. Um, and I will link information below. And um, it's it's hours or it's a few days. It is not years. This is a an acute heightened risk, time of, of heightened risk, where this is when the action is going to happen could happen maybe you have someone in your family your teenagers your co-worker um, if you identify this risk this heightened uh, risk syndrome and you need help in getting them to stop that that's 
to end that so that, bad words, to get out of that cycle of hours or days, what does that look like? So again, back to the 988 or other crisis lines, that is a really good start. Um, what do we say to people like that? I'm going to talk again about a personal situation for somebody that I love very, very much who uh, went through cycles and then here is the last day I'm going to tolerate this because I can't tolerate it anymore. And so that person got in his truck with a gun and sent one last picture and um, talked about what he was going to do. What do you do in that moment? I want you to just trust what comes up. Go ahead and beg and plead. Go ahead and explain what, what you're hearing isn't accurate. This is what I did. Again, I'm going to talk about my situation. We need you, we need you, we need you. Somebody needs you. I'm here for you, just get home. It makes it worse when the person is calling you from somewhere else, is away from you. And they're calling to say their final goodbye and you're desperately trying to convince them that the ruminating thoughts are not true. You're in crisis. It's not time to ask them What's wrong? How to get to this? In my situation, I just felt like it was time to take control. You're going to get home so that I can look at you face to face and explain to you, I need you. You cannot do this. Don't do this. We need you. You're loved. Whatever's going on, you're forgiven. Whatever's going on, you can get through it. I'll help you get through it. Is it your best friend that might be going through this? We're gonna go through this together. If they're with you, if you get to their house, if you get to that place, do you call 911? Yeah, calling 911 is good. In my situation, I called friends and activated this 911 alert system back to my house. And I did that because when these cycles again are happening and you're not sure when that one is going to occur, I just had it in place for if and when that ever did happen. If you live with somebody who has chronic episodes of these types of things, it's good to have a plan in place. It's good to talk to the kids. It's good to, you know, have something in place. So everybody, that person was found, that person was brought home, everybody was here. Now, do you go to the ER and get admitted? That's tough to weigh out, but it's only up to you and that person and what you think would be best. There's pros and cons to that. And those who have been admitted to um, a behavioral health facility can definitely tell you whether or not that helped them. But just talk it over with your provider. Call your doctor, call the hotline, call 911 if you want, go to the ER, talk to a social worker in the ER, but go with that person and don't leave them alone. Do everything you can to get through it. I took the tactic not knowing it was the same kind of tactic as this priest did who was counseling, talking to, helping a lady who's lived in New York and maybe you know about this story and I'll list her book below and her story, but her uh, family member, sister-in-law, um, had all three of her little children in the car. They were going somewhere and um, the aunt then was intoxicated and crashed the vehicle and all three children passed away. Now, this mother, father too, just wanted to not be here anymore. Understandable. And this priest would talk to her about those feelings and say, okay, well, let's just get through today. Because if you really want to, you got tomorrow, you have next week, you got months from now, but I'm going to get you through today. So sometimes I think that in a time of crisis like that, we're just going to get you through today. We're going to get you through this crisis and get you on the proper medication. Uh, you're gonna see the proper people and we're going to get you through it and get you well again because you're not well when you're thinking about this. You're just unwell right now and you need some help. You need help from people that love you to get through it. So that was um, the feelings I had at that time and other times. Okay, not tonight. It's not happening tonight. It's not happening today gonna get you through this 
and tell we're we're both well again. We're, we're both okay again. You're going to be okay. Lots of reassurance. You're going to be okay. I love you more than anything. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through this. You don't think you are. You don't think there's an end to it. You're going to get through this. Please don't do this. I know you I know you don't want to be here anymore. I need you here though. You can't do it. You're not going to do it. Oftentimes there is something little big that that person might say or do um, that is an indicator that this is something on their mind. It's okay to say it out loud, to talk to them about it, start counseling. It's okay to take medication. It's okay to call the crisis line as many times as you want or need. But you are loved and you need to be here for tomorrow.